Welcome to Weekend Beast. We've got Patterson Hood in the house of Drive By Truckers and uh, solo album fame. It's good to have you here, man. Good Great to, to you. be here. Thanks for having me. Well, listen, I'm, I'm uh, full disclosure, I'm a big fan, so we're going to nerd out a little bit. Um, one of the things I'm fascinated by in, in your music, uh, it, both, both in DBT and your solo work, I can't think of any other sort of modern songwriters who reference as many historical figures as you do. I was thinking about it just on the way over here. Carl Perkins, Sam Phillips, Lou Gehrig, George Wallace, Steve McQueen. <laughs> That's just like, you know, off the top That's of my That's one head. record, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a couple records, I think. Yeah. But, but is, is, that, is that conscious or is that just what you like? Or I think it's more just, I mean, I, I'm definitely obsessed with history and, and stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, my writing, I guess, reflects that for sure. But. Uh, uh, and, and, and obviously Cooley too, you know, because some of those are his songs too. So, uh, so it's just you know you, you write what interests you. So. And you just you just draw. Do you think of them as characters? You just draw them in because that's kind of it, it varies them? sometimes. Sometimes you know, or, or a way of a way of telling something that that hopefully might have some kind of relation to what's going on now by talking about something that happened in the past. You know, because history does repeat. You know, and so yeah. uh, so it's. Um, it's just kind of all of that's kind of worked its way into our collective little universe that we have. So, so you started playing with DBT in, in uh, 1996, 96. is that right? Yeah. And so these are all folks you grew up with, a lot of them, right? Right. T tell us how about that all came together. Because that's, well, that's, you've, been, you've been working this for a long it's time. It's been a while. Mike, Mike Cooley and I have been playing together since 1985. And we started this band in 96. And, uh, and of course, that's when things started actually kind of going better for us. The, the earlier years were pretty rough. <laughs> and when did things really stop, start popping? When Southern Rock Opera came out. We put that out in 2001 and, and uh, all this, things started changing pretty rapidly when that record came out. I, I want to go through some of the stories of the songs you guys have done and, and uh, just as a band, you know, right. forgetting who wrote it, The Righteous Path. And I, I, that one's mine and I, I wrote that one uh, uh, probably leading up to the last election cycle. I wrote it in the summer of 07, but, uh, but it was definitely, uh, you know, kind of just watching the, the political climate and how, you know, people's, people's real lives are actually affected by the things they so cavalierly do over there, you know, in, in Washington. And so, uh, so it, was, it was kind of, I guess, just my thoughts on that a little bit. It's funny, I wrote a piece at that time saying that was the song of that election. Uh, All right, thank yeah, you. And but, uh, no, because I thought it summed it up. Although I think the economic anxiety's grown, if anything. Yeah. Um, well, I saw it. I saw it coming. I mean, that wasn't a surprise. Yeah. You know? It's that's the thing. You know, we're we're on the road. You know, what two hundred days a year, and and pretty much have been since the mid '90s, and and so we were kind of watching a lot of the decline happened, you know, before, you know, before it crashed on Wall Street, it was already crashing in these, you know, in the Iron Belt towns and stuff. And, you know, you can, you outsource jobs and keep doing it and keep doing it. And one day you reach a tipping point. And I think that's kind of what happened. Uh, and, and you, I mean, in your travels, do you think it's been getting a little bit better or we're still keeping our nose, trying to keep our nose above water? It depends on where you're at. I mean, you know, I, I, I feel, I feel a little bit optimistic. I feel like things are, are some things are getting better, but I mean, some parts aren't. I mean, some of the jobs aren't coming back, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, Pride of the Yankees, last song I want to bring up. You said you'd written that right after the birth of your daughter. Right. And it's a damn sad song. Right. Uh, so, what, you know, how, how does that work? You see new daughter and. I, I think it was just the whole, you know, the, the you know, bringing a, bringing a child into the world in the, in the depths of the, of the, of the bush. W presidency when there's the, you know, the, it was right after 9/11 and and you know it was a it was a troubling time and I'm thinking you know how can I how do I protect her from all this you know and so I guess that's probably where that one came from. That makes so. sense. That makes sense. Uh, one aspect of a DBT show and it was true the other night. Um, a lot of drinking on stage. You're having a good time. Is, is that is that kind of just a is that like a well, you've been playing on the road so long can't be stage fright but is that just I mean is part of that kind of the atmosphere you create? Yeah, I mean you know the you know for all that's said about our songs being kind of dark and and coming from a coming from a, a dark place, the shows are very celebratory. Yeah, I mean it, it's very much a, you know that's that's been the one thing that 
it's been harder to make come across on records than maybe live because because live you get that it's it, it's a celebration there you know it may may come from a dark place but it's it's looking towards a lighter place and a more fun place and it's a way of kind of purging yourself of those those things that that bring you down all right patterson hood all thanks right for coming by thank you so man. much for having me. It was a lot of fun all right check it out buy his new album